Adlabs is one of the success stories of India's entertainment industry. From processing to production and distribution of films to India's first IMAX and multiplex cinemas, Adlabs has been a pioneer in the entertainment sector. Its latest venture is Imagica, spread over 300 acres in Kapoli near the expressway that links the cities of Mumbai and Pune. Imagica is now a reality. This is the story of the making of Imagica, India's first theme park. Let's meet the man who started it all, Mr. Manmohan Shetty. Well, to start with, I'm feeling very nice to be standing here and talking about it. Why did it think of doing this? Being part of the film industry for 35 years, I thought I need to do progressively something more than what I was doing all these years. The central idea of a master plan began to emerge. At Imagica, the team started storming up designs that would go into the making of the theme park. One of the key goals during the designing was to create an environment in which a guest can be taken on a journey, away from the mundane realities of life and escape into an illusion that would be fun-filled and rewarding. An experience of the romance of exploration and travel that would immerse a guest through themed attractions where design, landscaping, themed dining and retail, signage, ambient music, character design, building facades, props, interactive installations and merchandise which are not just elements but also opportunities to instill a feeling of escapism in the park. This unique escapism is what will separate Imagica from all other parks in India, making it at par with the best theme parks around the world. In the entertainment industry, it's only possible to do a theme park kind, which has been successful in US, Europe, Southeast Asia, China, all over. The first blast triggered the awakening of the master plan. On 21st October 2010, work began in full swing. Every dig and drill modified the contours of a landscape as massive as 10 football stadiums. Two thousand five hundred workers put in 12 hours a day for three years in order to mold this extraordinary world of fantasy. A newfangled entertainment began to emerge. When you want to do a large establishment like this, is a land. All over the country, it's uh, known that it's so difficult to acquire the land and do a project. So I started this exercise in the year 2009, and in around one and a half years, we managed to get this land. The rules of acquiring the land is so stringent in Maharashtra. So we went through all the process and got this land done. And finding the finance is another next step, which is a large one to take how much, how you can get this funded. Apart from our own capital, we went to the banks. It took long time to convince what the theme park is. And anyway, somehow we managed. I'm sure you know when you see this that I have managed it. And it was a, a great task to convince the people to invest money in this project. In addition to it, in terms of the permissions, the state permissions, I think we didn't have much problem, the, the local collectorate was very helpful because they were happy that in, in this area there so much investment we made. They were very helpful and helped us a lot in terms of the permissions. I think we achieved that in a very short time, I think in two years time from the groundbreaking, we opened the park in March 2013. Actually, I'm supposed to be the creative director for the park, yes, but uh, I got involved in the project uh, since the very beginning. In the right side of the park will be mostly driven by adrenaline rides, all the rides that you'll be able to see it. 
and the left side of the park was more story driven with the buildings uh, that you go in and out and uh, many restaurants and places. We create also a beautiful lagoon in front of the project to also to have a lot of uh, water factors, you know, calculated uh, the sun, the shadows and the and there's a lot of lot of that goes into that process. The difference between this park that is actually we're doing something very unique. All the stories are actually being created here with a legacy that goes back into the history of this country and the traditions, which I give Mr. Shetty's creative team uh, the credit for that. Um, so it was very uh, different in, in a way. We didn't import any Superman or <laughs> intellectual property that exists already, and we used our own. Here's a closer look at Imagica's themed attractions. Wrath of the Gods is a novel attraction that takes inspiration from the ancient temples of India where the legendary elemental gods come alive. The God of Fire, the God of Water and the God of Wind. As most ancient temples were constructed in caves, this attraction replicates the same. Along with the other entertainment uh, attractions, we wanted one attraction based on the mythology of our uh, culture. Hence, we chose three gods, three elements, Vayu, Agni and Jal. The interior of the temple is technically designed to incorporate a blend of live theatre, special effects and multimedia, which displays the might of these gods. Let's call it as a like, disaster ride. Uh, this is a unique experience in India. So to making all these three elements together and to give that best experience to the audience, that was our motto. Wrath of the Gods. Witness Asia's first cultural religious based attraction. biggest ride in the country. It's from a uh, role of poster manufacturer, Oligar and Mabillard, Switzerland. After we bought this ride and with the way we see people react to this coaster, it's one of the most popular rides in the park. Nitro is India's largest roller coaster, which makes one dart through winding tracks and loops in mid-air. Indians may have not been exposed to thrill, but they are actually high thrill people. Rajasaurus. So in one more attraction, what we also wanted to put a flume ride, which is water-based, and it's a our team found out a dinosaur of Indian origin called a Rajasaurus. Rajasaurus River Adventure is the journey through the world of dinosaurs. Hi, this name is Rajasaurus River Adventure. This was like based on Dr. Krishna Roy, who have done a research in Narmada Valley. Uh, near Narmada River and he found some fossils of Rajasaurus. Creating the prehistoric world of dinosaurs who roamed the earth before man did demanded research of the creatures, flora and fauna that existed in those times. To resurrect a primitive environment Thousands of artificial plants and hundreds of artificial trees were either made in-house or sourced. It took one year to produce 27 dinosaurs of different species based on detailed designs and an additional year was spent on the full-scale installation of the ride. Rajasaurus and the other dinosaurs were revived from extinction through animatronics.
envisioned first as an outdoor ride, this adventure attraction had to be engulfed in a dome due to climatic conditions. The unique part of this ride, which I think is unique anywhere in the world, is that it's a, it's a, it's a water ride that is covered. We had almost 27 to 30 vendors for doing Rajasaurus in-house, working on the same platform, together on the site. I was not getting my point through till we had our first rain in the park and a lot of the foliage got destroyed and then I think I got my point across that, you know, because of weather and because of the conditions in India, if we needed to do a ride like this, it had to be covered. The moment had arrived to build a time machine that transports one into the unmapped domain of the Rajasaurus. Gold Rush Express. Gold Rush Express is a roller coaster where one speeds in a train through abandoned gold mines and cowboy saloons in the wild, wild west. Alibaba or Charlie's Chor. As uh, giving a variety of different different kind of experience to guests, we also thought we should have an interactive attractions. Interactive target practice in terms of you shoot the bad guys. So we chose a subject called Alibaba 40 Thieves that everybody knows as from Arabian Night Story. And you win the points on the end of the attraction. So that becomes a competition within the family, with the guests. So it's been a very liked attraction here. Alibaba or Charlie's Chore is a ride that recreates the story of Alibaba and the 40 thieves from the magical tales of Arabian Nights. Entire attraction was built here in India. Only the ride part which was got from Sally that was outsourced. The structure of the Kingdom of Gulabad stays true to its Arabic influence using domes, arches and geometrical motifs. The mystical cave of the thieves had to be detailed. Treasure-filled bags and chests were carefully made to be flaunted inside the cave. The veiled attire of the thieves was marked with a target emblem. Adding to the authenticity were the weapons. Alibaba discovers the secret treasure of 40 thieves who are hiding, waiting to kill him. It is an entry into a fortress in the exquisite kingdom of Gulabad. To claim a share from the treasure, one must shoot the diabolical thieves. This ride has 12 scenes and this is the duration of the ride is around 5 minutes. And you can see around more than two to three thousand props which were designed and to the manufactured here in Pune in India. D2 Dead Rock. D2 Dead Drop is the only attraction in India that shoots one into the sky and drops faster than gravity, giving a blood rush to those who dare. Cinema 360, Prince of the Dark Waters. We wanted an attraction with the very new cinematic experience of a 360 degrees uh, dome theatre. And it was very challenging to get six projectors put together to project one frame in 360 degrees. 
Cinema 360 Prince of the Dark Waters is a beautiful story of a world thriving deep underwater where mythical mermaids come alive. We wanted to do an underwater love story and we wanted to do it in Hindi. We took uh, some of our own uh, elements, Indian elements. Our characters are called Neera and Vajraksh and we Indianized the entire concept of an underwater love story and uh, created this show. Prince of the Dark Waters is a visual delight encapsulated in a dome theater. Made by Lancer, the half-circular dome theater is the second of its kind in the world. Once the story was developed, the process for creating the animation was tricky as it was different from the standard front-facing screen format. The story needed to unravel in a way where one's vision was guided around the dome screen. Six projectors seamlessly make one enter the surreal world of aquatic characters that leave you spellbound. Scream Machine Machine is an enormous rotating pendulum, spinning all the while, driving one to frenzied screams. It is the tallest ride of its kind in India. Salim Gar. Salim Gar is a horrifying ride that transports one through the dark passages of history into the torture fort of the Mughal king Aurangzeb. What is interesting about this ride is that it's one of the rare attractions anywhere in the world you'll have a horror ride which has animatronics, it has some kind of uh, movements which are fast and on a track but here we have a track, we have live actors that come involved into the attraction along with animatronics and we have visual effects also in the show. The aging and dilapidated fort of Salimgarh duplicates the arches, intricate jali, stone and brickwork of Mughal architecture. Converted into a prison by King Aurangzeb, the interiors are lit by fire torches and lamps. Instruments of torture are displayed to portray the king's barbarism. Emerging from the haunting darkness is the king's eldest daughter, Zebunissa, who was imprisoned for 20 years. The tormented prisoners and cold-blooded prison guards are reborn through animatronics. Kiddy Rides Children can enjoy so much more than the humble merry-go-round as there is a variety of exciting rides for them. Mr. India
Mr. India is an enthralling cinematic experience enjoyed sitting in a car. Mr. India is a film that was made 25 years back but it is still relevant uh, for us as a team because uh, it had the biggest, baddest villain, Mugambo. The reason to take Mr. India as a, as a film uh, for this particular form of technology is that this form of technology is an immersive, it's like a car which is immersive so you feel you're part of the movie. Fight is between Mr. India and Mugambo and we as a viewer are a part of that journey. The ride occurs inside a cinema hall-like structure where nine replicas of Mr. India's signature car face a screen. The electro-pneumatic cars work on air pressure. Immersive motion simulation technology complements the visuals. Stemming from the blockbuster movie Mr. India, one accompanies Mr. India, Seema and TP the Robo on a joy ride into lands where one faces Mogambo's trickery. As a team, I don't think there was any other Indian film that would fit the, the bill as much as this did. So as a team, we went out and got the rights to make Mr. India and it's one of our most popular attractions and uh, I think it worked out well. Deep Space Attention. Due to the threat of external contamination. Deep Space is a launch into outer space through galaxies where gravity is defied with every twist and turn. Toxicity level increasing. Five. Four, three, two, one. Enclosed in a gigantic dome is India's first dark coaster, Deep Space. The ride is from Premier Rides USA and is one of the uh, best uh, roller coaster manufacturer in the world. Designed to duplicate a space station, the roller coaster begins in the setup of a space launch. What I really like about the ride is that when you're sitting in the seat and from the loading area, you actually cannot see anything that is happening inside because A, it's dark, uh, B, the, the entire coaster track, like unlike any other coaster in India and a lot of places in the world, is it, it's hidden from you. Powered by the linear synchronous motor magnetic launch, the coaster shoots to rapid speeds in a matter of seconds. Our team has successfully installed this LSM coaster and it is running successfully now. The coaster orbits in the celestial world of planets from Mars to Pluto. A rip-roaring experience of travelling through space. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome aboard India's premier flying experience. Today, we travel from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. Fasten the seatbelts and take off in 3, 2, 1. Eye for India is a bird's eye view soaring over the marvellous sights and landscapes of India. We thought we should have a soaring over India. So we titled it Soar India, which is ultimately titled as I for India, which we shot all over the country on a helicopter and it's a flying experience in the theme park. We had a DOP from the United States of America in a very, very accomplished, talented DOP in Mark Pingri. He had about 23 years of experience of aerial flying and he was hugely responsible for the outcome of this film. Apart from that, we had a crew that was a small crew but extremely dedicated and we were together for a year and a half and that was an amazing journey. It was very interesting, sometimes we are flying very low, watching out for the wires to get and capture the panorama and the landscape and from there we are actually flying at about 20,000 feet with oxygen. Being the first of its kind, the 90 feet wide screen is projected with visuals from a height of 30 meters at 48 frames per second. The four corners of the screen are angled at 120 degrees and the visuals ingest one as the screen is vertically tapered. It consists of three assemblies of three rows with each row comprising of 11 unique flying seats. 
It stands proud as the only ride in the park created by an Indian, Raghunandan Jagdish. When we saw the lines and we stood with the people through the pre-show and we went into the auditorium, we saw the seats going up for this flying experience. At that point of time, we all the crew were watching the people and I can tell you that was the most beautiful moment for all of us. At the infancy stage itself, an extensive reconnaissance was done to identify the essential monuments, landscapes and cities that had to be covered. After 18 months of persistence, numerous government permissions were finally granted in order to aerially shoot the required sites. This is the first uh, in Asia that something like this has been done. But when other people do it, it's, it's like one state or one small place, they do it in a very panoramic manner. But here we had the challenge of doing an entire country with all its diversity. And I don't think that the country has been captured better than this ever before. The way the plan worked out for Imagica and the FNB business, uh, it started out with our master planning company, uh, which was assigning spaces within the parkland for rides, and they also designed some space for our restaurants and kiosks. The park was designed for 15,000 people. We had six restaurants, which had around 1,200 seats, which is a sizable number. Um, and we also had a lot of external seating as well as kiosks, be able to grab and go food and move along. We have a, a sizable central kitchen space. We have a sizable warehousing space to stock food, considering we're not in the city limits. We are also going to offer food, uh, which will suit different palates, not just the menu, but also price points. So we have a food court, we have uh, burgers, we have uh, you know Indian uh, buffet style uh, restaurant, we have kiosks which are grab and go, we have pizzas, we have a very casual uh, bar which is in the form of our boat restaurant called Armada. So we've got a whole ra range of experiences and uh, uh, options for our guests. Our challenge was actually to make a park accessible to everyone. And so the fine balance between people that can afford it and people that can come and, and that we don't expect to come every day. But it was a, there was a fine line where we draw it um, between people that have international experience and exposure to these parks and people that have actually never seen one. Environment specific, you can see the entire surrounding is completely green. When we started the project, there were only 46 trees on the site. Finally, we ended up with more than 5,600 trees on site and ever expanding. We are water sustainable. That is one of the best, best uh, achievements that we have taken. Altogether, this, that is creating a kind of a value for the entire project. Initially, we had a big challenges of getting the localites who have never seen or felt a park what it is all about. To transform them into give an international services was really a task. So we had really worked into programs of how to make them work on safety, courtesy and efficiency. The brief given to me by Mr. Shetty when we started the park was to have a security plan in place which is responsive, which is proactive, which is credible and timely. The security should always operate in the background and never be overwhelming. End of the day, we are a hospitality industry and our guests need to feel secure and yet not feel overawed by the security cordon around. And that's what we always aim to achieve.
Mr. Shetty, would you agree that a visit to Imagica can bring out the child in you? Yes. Come to Imagica.